I spoke to Zion Williamson earlier today, and unfortunately the Pelicans haven't been able to rock with him on the court due to injury. And he said they're basically reprogramming him physically. It's all about the kinetic chain of the body, even teaching him to walk and run differently. Last night during the Pelicans game, George Sedano reported that the Pelicans are basically trying to reprogram Zion's body to change the way that he moves while he's out recovering from his surgery. They're going so far to even try and adjust the way that he runs and walks, and I've got to say, I'm really happy that this is finally something, now that's being addressed, out in the open that we can really talk about. So now the question is, how do you retrain someone to walk and run, and does it actually work? Welcome back everyone to your number one source for learning about everything related to sports injuries and sports medicine news. In this video, I'm going to address the recent reports about how the Pelicans are trying to essentially rewire and reprogram Zion's movements before he returns. Some of you might recall I made a video talking about this exact concern a couple of months ago, specifically looking at some of the footage of Zion's gait and kind of the alignment of his knees and how this might make him more at risk of injury. Now that Zion and the Pelicans are being open about addressing these concerns, I think this is a perfect video to sort of bring all this back around full circle. Also make sure and stick around to the end because I'm going to give you guys my opinion on whether or not I think Zion should just sit out for the rest of the season. Make sure and go subscribe if you like this type of content and want to stay up to date with my future videos. And let's get started. Zion has a number of characteristics that put him at particular risk of approaching a career trajectory similar to someone like a Greg Oden or a Brandon Roy. He has a piece of meniscus that's been surgically removed from one of his knees and he's got an abnormally heavy frame built on this foundation of a number of movement deficiencies. It's the perfect storm when it comes to having a career plagued by injuries, and so NBA fans and Pelicans fans should be reassured by this news when it comes to trying to correct these things before something gets out of hand. Before we continue, I wanna give a special shout out to Audible for sponsoring this video. Audible has the world's largest collection of audiobooks and audio entertainment. They also have a number of Audible originals, which are exclusively created for audio and feature things like documentaries, exclusive audiobooks, and scripted shows that you're not going to find anywhere else. Audible also has an extremely efficient and convenient app where you can listen to your content anywhere on any device, whether you're on a road trip, as part of your commute to work or to school in the morning, or even just at the gym working out. Right now, if you head over to audible.com forward slash Brian MD or text Brian MD to 500-500, you can get signed up for a free one month Audible membership. And with that, you're going to get one completely free audiobook, regardless of the cost as well as two free audible originals while you're over there i highly recommend you check out an audiobook called good to go this book is a fascinating look at the science of sports fitness and recovery and covers topics like cryotherapy infrared sauna even things like tom brady's infrared pajamas so one more time head over to audible.com forward slash brian md or text brian md to 500-500 to get started with your one month audible membership completely free and get access to that one free audiobook and two free Audible originals. Thanks again to Audible for sponsoring today's video, and let's get back to it. Let's start off with this concept of the kinetic chain. The movement of all the different joints throughout your body are intricately linked together like a chain and influence one another. What's happening biomechanically at your knee is a direct effect of what's going on up at the hips or even down in the feet. Similarly, for a baseball pitcher, what's happening as they release the ball is a product of what's going on all the way down from their feet on the ground, up through their trunk, and into their arm. Having a poor kinetic chain can be the difference between looking like Forrest Gump pre and post leg braces. So how do we evaluate the kinetic chain and measure for these potential movement deficiencies like we can see in Zion. Let's start off by talking about what the Pelicans might do to address Zion's gait. Going back to my first video, it appears that Zion has more of what we'd call a knee valgus alignment with his gait. Looking straight on at my knees, this would be an example of a good neutral alignment. If the knees are falling inward, we'd call that a knee valgus position, similar to what it looks like Zion could have. And if the knees are bent outward, that would be more of a knee varus position. So if the knees are collapsing inward, we have to look at what could be causing them to fall that way. This is where we have to go back to our idea of the kinetic chain, looking both below and above the knee joint for potential sources of the problem. If we start off down at the feet, we know that having a flat foot or what we call pes planus can put you at risk of having more knee valgus position. Whenever the foot is flat, you basically cause collapse inward, which translates up to the knee, giving you that valgus position. By restoring that arch to the foot, you bring the foot back in proper alignment, which travels up that chain and helps to align the knee. Now, of course, some people are born with just naturally flat feet, and so there's other things you can try to do to help kind of strengthen your arches. There's a specific muscle called your tibialis posterior, 
that sort of goes down to form some of the structural component of your arch and can in some cases be strengthened to try to give people better arch support. We can then look above at the muscles in the hips and how that could be affecting the knee position. Whenever the knees are falling inward, it's easy to look just front on and say, well, it's all a problem in what we call this frontal plane. But if we actually looked kind of down from above, you would see there's actually a component of internal rotation of the femur whenever the knees collapse inward. So the leg is rotating in this way, which causes it to collapse inward. So we have to try to correct that internal rotation by then strengthening our external rotators to help pull the legs back out into that proper aligned position. Also, we have muscles at the hips called the hip abductors. These are muscles that help to bring our leg out to this position. And if those muscles are weak, we can again have collapse inward of our knees. The strength of these hip muscles is also particularly important when we're walking and running because there's one point during our gait where all of our weight is being supported on just one leg. While I'm standing here like this, I have to have a lot of activation and strength in my hip muscles to keep me from falling from one side to the other and to keep my knee from moving in and out. If these muscles in the hip abductors are weak, it can cause your pelvis to collapse to the other side which gives you this abnormal alignment and puts excessive load on both your hip and down on your knee. So by strengthening these hip abductors, we can help pull the pelvis back up into proper neutral alignment to restore those good biomechanical patterns. Now there's a lot of different movements involved in playing basketball, so let's narrow it down to two simplified ones, specifically jumping and running. Both of these are pretty easy to evaluate, especially with the resources of an NBA team like the Pelicans. Medical teams can do a variety of motion analysis, looking at everything from simply being filmed while running on a treadmill to covering a player's body with these reflective markers and setting up a room full of 3D cameras to get more specific 3D motion analysis. With these tools, you can evaluate how all these joints are moving relative to one another at the specific points during the movement. You can even cover an athlete with little sensors to measure how much the muscles are firing. This can tell you whether or not the hip muscles are firing appropriately at different points during the gait or during the jump and can help identify some of these deficiencies from a strength and a muscle activation standpoint. Let's talk in a little more detail about evaluating and reprogramming someone's jumping and landing. These things are really the foundation of what we call ACL injury prevention programs, which are one of the most proven ways to prevent injuries that we see in sports. We know there's different biomechanical positions that put the ACL at more risk of getting torn. And so by doing this motion analysis, we can analyze a player's lower extremities to try and see if they're going into any of these patterns that might make them at risk of an ACL tear. Just one example is whenever someone jumps and lands, you can measure how much collapse you see at the knee, which can be a risk factor for having an ACL tear. But it's a lot more complicated than just looking straight on and measuring an angle. There's different rotational features, there's angles, there's moments. There's a lot of complexity that goes into measuring where all of these joints are in relative position to one another. When we evaluate someone's running, we can again do the same sorts of things. You can simply put a camera behind someone while running and sort of stop the frames at different times and draw lines to look at how much the pelvis is tilting and look at where the knee is positioned relative to the foot. But again, you can take this even a step further and get much, much more detail about all these things by doing higher level 3D image analysis. So once you've identified these movement deficiencies, what's a medical team like the Pelicans going to do to try and correct them? Certainly some of it is training muscles that are weak to become stronger. A perfect example is a lot of runners have really weak hip muscles, particularly the hip muscles called the abductors. Whenever you're running, there's one particular phase of your stride where all of your weight is on one foot. If during this time you have weak muscles up at your hips, you make it easier for your knee and your leg to collapse inward. By strengthening those muscles in your hips, you're able to bring that knee into a more optimal position. Similarly, if someone has deficiencies with their quad strength or their hamstring strength that might lead them to risk of an ACL tear, you can work on those. But it's not as simple as just going in the gym and lifting weights. Here you really are trying to reprogram the system. You've heard the phrase, you have to learn to walk before you can run, and this is important here. Players have to learn how to do the most basic movements properly before they can progress to higher level activities. So for example, you need to learn how to do a single leg squat appropriately before you can go jump and land with some acrobatic dunk. So you really have to rewire your brain and your neuromuscular system to establish these corrective patterns and reestablish good habits. A lot of it involves real-time coaching from the physical therapist or the athletic trainers, 
guiding the athletes through these exercises and watching them to make sure they're moving appropriately. So is there any hope for Zion and for NBA fans? Yes, there is 100% hope that these things can be worked on and improved. Looking at some specific examples, we know that ACL injury prevention programs are very effective. A 2018 study estimated that these programs can reduce the risk of an ACL tear by 50% in all athletes. Another example is something called patellofemoral pain. This commonly occurs in runners and jumping athletes and is thought to be in part due to an abnormal alignment or positioning of the kneecap relative to the femur that imparts some high stresses through the knee. There's a number of studies where they'll take runners with patellofemoral pain and put them on a treadmill in front of a mirror while also monitoring their biomechanics. If anything is off or abnormal, the runner will get that information in real time and a verbal and visual cue with what they need to do to correct their movement. And the studies show that this works. It reduces the pain, the patellofemoral syndrome, and actually changes their movement patterns while they're running. Even when the runner stopped having that mirror in front of them and the verbal cues, they were still able to maintain their proper and improved biomechanics. So there is certainly hope here, and this is really great news to hear that the Pelicans are addressing this with Zion. Now don't expect to see huge major changes right away. We're not gonna suddenly see Zion step out on the court and watch him walk and say, wow, he looks like a whole new person. These are changes that take time and are going to be an ongoing part of Zion's rehab in his career. Depending on what might happen with his weight, with his body style, if he has any additional injuries, those are all gonna be factors that play in to any tweaks or changes to make to this sort of gait movement retraining program. There's no getting around the fact that he has a piece of meniscus missing from his knee, and he's playing with an abnormally high body weight for someone his height. But addressing Zion's foundation by reprogramming and addressing these movement patterns is absolutely crucial to giving him the best shot at having a long and injury-free career. Finally, this question of whether or not Zion should just sit out for the rest of the season I think is a tricky one to answer, but something that as the weeks progress, we really need to consider. The Pelicans appear to be well out of playoff contention, and so by the time Zion were ready to come back, I don't think there's any reason why that would suddenly change and they'd be able to make the playoffs. A lot of this stuff we've talked about in the video takes a long time to really get in place and really train, and so it's not something I think Zion can just figure out in the next few weeks. Initially, I thought that if he was able to get back by the beginning of the new year, that it would make sense for him to be able to play at least around half of the season, but as each week progresses and it gets to the point where he might only have one or two months of the season, I'm starting to think more and more that really it would be best in his interest to just sit out for this year. He can continue fine tuning these rehab principles and come back really ready to go for his next season. That's it for the video, everybody. Thank you as always for watching. Let me know any questions or comments you have below. And until next time, we'll see you later. Bye.